Let's pray. Lord, meet us where we're at today. Bless us with your love and with your truth, with your guidance, with your Holy Spirit. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray this all in the powerful and saving name of Jesus. Amen. How would you describe yourself to someone? Let's, let's say you have an acquaintance, you've talked with them a, a couple of times, and now you guys are, are talking again. How would you describe yourself to that person? Who are you? They give you about five, ten seconds to come up with five descriptive titles of who you are. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sure you and I can come up with a, a lot of titles and stuff, but here, here are five of mine. Husband, father, friend, pastor, child of God. How many of you who are Christians came up with a descriptive title of being a Christian? You know, like Christian or, or child of God. See, the greatest privilege, the highest status that anyone could ever have is not that of being like a Hall of Famer, not an uh, Olympic champion, not an Academy or Grammy Award winner, not a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Not that uh, of, of being a, a wife or a husband or a mom or a dad. All those things are awesome. But the greatest privilege and the highest status that anybody could ever have would be to be known as a child of God. See, when you're a child of God, you get to call God dad. I remember my, my little two-year-old at the time, granddaughter, when, when she saw her father, she had on her light blue dress and her little sandals, and she saw him, and she went running to him exclaiming, Daddy! That's what we get to do. As children of God, we, we get to go to God when, when things are growing great, when he has blessed us, and we're really thankful. We go, to, we go to Daddy! And when things are tough, and it's really hard, we get to run to him, Daddy! You know, one of the, the really cool things, neat things, uh, exciting things of being a child of God is, is, is not that we were born into it, okay? We weren't born into it. Maybe we had Christian parents, but it's the Holy Spirit working through word and sacrament that brings us to faith. The scripture says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. See, one of the, the cool and, and exciting things and transformative things about being a, a child of God is that we didn't work for it. We didn't earn it or, or pay for it. We couldn't. It was too expensive. But God paid for it and gave it to us as a gift. The scripture says this, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. What makes being a, a child of God so cool, so, so exciting, so transformative is that while we were running away from God, while we were in the process of doing our own thing, going our own way, God came running after us in love. He wanted us. 
Scripture says this, God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God came running after us. He wanted us to have relationship with him. You see, spiritually lost people matter to God. And it's his desire to have relationship with each of us. And for those of us who are Christians, it's a miracle. It's a miracle that we're Christians. That you and I, for those of us who are Christians, it's proof that God is working in our lives. That we believe is a work of the Holy Spirit. It's a fulfillment of Ezekiel 36 that says, where God's talking to us, he says, I'll give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who changes us, makes us new, transforms us, makes us a child of God. And one of the ways that Scripture talks about us as those of us who are children of God is that then since we're a child of God, we're a part of the body of Christ. And another way about that is if you're a part of the body of Christ, you are the church. And today, as we continue our series, as Pastor Ben mentioned, we are the church. We want to look at and answer this question that the Holy Spirit who brought us to faith, what is the Holy Spirit leading us to do now? Okay. And, and to answer this question, we're going to look at a number of scriptures. We're going to look at beginning uh, Acts chapter 2. Okay. And it's talking about that early Christian church, the early ones who were children of God. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. How could they do that? How could, how could they just give away their possessions? Because they knew that it was God who gave them their possessions in the first place. And that God's generosity never runs out. And it goes on talking about those early children of God. Every day, priority. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. See, it's the Holy Spirit working in our lives that moves us and motivates us to make a difference in the lives of our families and our friends and our communities. It's through the working of the Holy Spirit that you and I, we can help the poor. We can strengthen the weak. We can be compassionate to those who are hurting. We can proclaim freedom to those captives by sin and, and captive to abuse. Reminds me of a missionary by the name of Jackie Pullinger. Jackie's mission field, if you will, sex workers, gang members, and addicts. And this is how Jackie began a talk to other children of God one time. She said, God wants to give us soft hearts and hard feet. The problem with most of us is that we have hard hearts and soft feet. But when the Spirit of God comes, he softens our hearts. He gives us compassion and gives us hard feet, a willingness to go anywhere. 
Undoubtedly, Jackie found herself in, in some really difficult situations, right? But as you saw her in those difficult situations, you could see her heart by the expression of love and concern and compassion on her face. God is leading you and me to have soft hearts and hard feet, to be like Jesus. I'm going to share with you a, a passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, uh, any number of you will kind of know this. You'll probably have it memorized, but I'll throw a little bit of a curve at you because every time it says love or refers to love, I'm just going to insert Jesus in there since Jesus is love. Hear the words then. Jesus is patient. Jesus is kind. Jesus does not envy. Jesus does not boast. Jesus is not proud. Jesus does not dishonor others. Jesus is not self-seeking. Jesus is not easily angered. Jesus keeps no record of wrongs. Jesus does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Jesus always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Jesus never fails. We need that Jesus. Everybody needs that Jesus. So what is the Holy Spirit leading us to do now? The Holy Spirit is leading us to become more like Jesus. Soft hearts and hard feet. The Holy Spirit is leading us be like Jesus and share Jesus with others. Acts 1.8 says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit comes on us, gives us his power and then we become his witnesses. We tell other people not only the history story of Jesus, which is true, but we tell people about what Jesus has done in our life as well. And other people see the difference in our lives and are attracted to it. Maybe, maybe that's why some of you are, are here today or worshiping online because someone showed you what it was like to be Jesus and you were attracted to that. And you said, I want that. To be like Jesus. See, Christians are witnesses and I know that, that some of you are going, hmm, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm introverted. I, I don't want to be pushy. I, I don't want to be that guy. When the Holy Spirit comes on us, we'll be his witnesses. Nicky Gumbel talks, he's a pastor and he authored this Bible study called Alpha. And, and he, he talks about a, a man who, who really believed but, but didn't want to share it really with anyone, you know, that he was a believer because he, he knew then that he would be responsible. He would need to tell others. And, and so he just, he just backed off of it all and kind of was stepping away from it. And a, a wise old man came to this guy and he said, here's the deal. He goes, God's going to make an exception for you. 
okay? You can be a believer, but you don't have to tell anyone, okay? It'll just be between you and God. It'll be your secret. The man went to his room one night, and he was thinking about it all, and he was thinking about all that Jesus had done for him and, and all the many different things that, you know, where Jesus met him in his life and how Jesus had forgiven him all of his sins. And, you know, and, and it, he was just overcome with the truth of Jesus. And he goes downstairs and he, he tells his family and friends who are gathered there, you know, he, he tells them, yeah, I was, just, I was just talking with God, I was just talking with Jesus and, you know, Jesus has just been such a powerful influence in my life. Jesus has really been working in my life in these, you know, last weeks that I've been studying him and, and everything and, and Jesus paid for all of my sins and he goes, and here's the thing, but I don't really have to tell anyone about it. But see, he already did. That's how the Holy Spirit works. What's the Holy Spirit leading us to do now? The Holy Spirit is leading us to join Jesus on his mission to seek and save the lost. The, the spiritually lost. The, the spiritually lost who are close by and the spiritually lost who are far away. Quiz time for you, okay? How many people do you think that we reach through our social ministry platforms in the month of August? 2023, August 2023. How many impressions do you think we had in that one month? 250,000 in one month. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the world. Holy Spirit is leading us to do that. You see, heaven and hell are real. They're, it's not mythology. It's not story time. People will spend an eternity in one place or the other. And God has made it so no one needs to spend eternity anywhere but with him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Heaven and hell are real. We don't want our worst enemy to be in hell. More than that, we are, are equal to that. We, we want everybody to join in the party of heaven the greatest celebration of all. And we do this as the Holy Spirit motivates us and moves us to reach out with the exact same love that God reached us with. The author of the book, More Ready Than You Imagine, talks about evangelism today in, in the postmodern world. And he says, today sharing Jesus looks like Hospitality, friendship, influence, invitation, as companionship, opportunity, and conversation. The author of the New Testament book, Hebrews, says to us, don't forget to show hospitality. Missional hospitality. For, for some of us, it's, it's as easy as inviting our, our neighbors or friends over for Friday night or Saturday night dinner or going out to a restaurant with them. For some of us, it's, it's as easy as grabbing a cup of coffee with uh, another parent that drops off and picks up their kid at the same school at the same time that we do day after day. For some of us, it's as easy as eating lunch with that coworker in the lunchroom or going out for a burger, a restaurant, however your time works. Dave Ferguson, author and, and pastor, gives us this insight. He said that God is used to reach and redeem people the blessed strategy. 
And he shares with us God's word in, in Genesis where it's, God says to Abram, I'll bless you and all people on earth will be blessed through you. Okay? Now, now that's a, a messianic prophecy. All nations will be blessed through you and all peoples will be blessed through you. But it's also, it's also a way of life. God has blessed us to be a blessing. Two groups of missionaries went to Thailand. One group was known as the converters. They were there to save souls, to evangelize. Another group, they were called the blessers. And they went to Thailand just with this, that whoever God puts in front of us, we're going to bless. We're just going to bless whoever God puts in front of us. That's it. And after two years, this is what they found that uh, the blessers, they made a, an impact in the community. There was social reform and social responsibility that had taken place. For the converters, there was really no difference at all in that community. They had, they had no impact on society. After two years, they also found that through the blessers, God had brought 48 people to faith. And through the converters, God had brought one person to faith. So check it out. A great way to seek and save the lost, to carry out the mission of reaching today's people with Christ's victory, is to be blessers. At a practical level, this can be carried out and accomplished through bless practices. Okay. The be and bless begin with prayer. So let's do it right now. Lord God, pour out your spirit on us so that we bless those in our lives right now. And pour out your spirit on us so that we bless other people as you bring them into our life. Help us to be a blessing. In your name we pray. Amen. The L is to listen. When you're with the person, listen. Listen intently. Don't be thinking about what you're going to say or any. Just listen. The E is eat. Mm -hmm. That's that missional hospitality. Okay. That's that dinner. That's that cup of coffee. That's that lunch. That's that victory cafe thing. Mm -hmm. The first S is serve. After you get to know the person, right? Serve them in the way that they need you to serve them. You know how. You've got to know them. And the final S is share. Share the story of Jesus. Not just the historical story. Share that. Share the story of Jesus in your life. Share the story that you know that Jesus wants to have in that other person's life. What's the Holy Spirit leading us to do now? The Holy Spirit is leading us to bless others. At Victory, our mission is to reach today's people with Christ's victory. We're, we're a part of a mission. We're not a, a part so much of a, a building or an address. We are the people of God. We are on mission. And that mission will not cease until Jesus comes back. May the Holy Spirit, who reached out and touched us with faith and love, may he lead us to bless others, to reach out in that same love, that same concern, and be a blessing.
Uh, I want to share one last scripture with you. It's from Revelation chapter 22, last book of the Bible. So kind of like you could say last words, right? God to us. But he just, the spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. That's God's invitation to you. No matter who you are. That's God's invitation to everyone. No matter who they are. Come. Drink from the water of life. Come and drink of Jesus. Come and experience God's love for you. Come and experience relationship with God so that you can run to him. Every daddy, come. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come. Use those gifts that the Holy Spirit has given to you. Come. Come, Holy Spirit, to us. Help us to bless others. Come and receive the water of life. If you're here today and, and you're listening to this message and you're going, but, but I'm not thirsty, then why not pray? Lord, I'm not thirsty. Help me to be thirsty. And then come and drink of the water of life. And then you'll be able to run to God in all situations and call him daddy. Let's pray. Daddy, <laughs> thank you so much for blessing us in so many ways. Daddy, thank you for giving your son Jesus to be our Savior. Daddy, thank you for that overwhelming love. Daddy, send your Holy Spirit. And just let your Holy Spirit have flee, free and full flow in our lives. And give us soft hearts and hard feet and make us a blessing to others. In your name, we pray, amen.